Hello everybody, Clint Seeley here. Um, today I want to bring you a short video. This is not uh, so much a tutorial as it's just going to be a quick video presentation. Um, what I'm proud to introduce today are my first series of mandala shapes. Okay, Like what you see on the screen here, that's a mandala shape. If you uh, Google Mandala on, um, if you do a Google search on Google Images, you'll see all kinds of stuff um, that resemble these these shapes. It's kind of uh, an artwork that uh, began as a spiritual art, but is transformed and is just kind of, uh, uh, everybody uses it. If you can see, just looking at how symmetrical this art is, um, there are a wide variety of ways that we could use art pieces like this when it comes to digitizing. Whether it's um, it would be applique or you could do some quilting stuff. These shapes can be used uh, for the cut work tool, also the uh, paint work tool, and also the rhinestone tool. So there's a lot of different ways that we can use these shapes. But what I want to do today it's kind of refresh your memory on how to use my digitizing elements. If you remember, the reason I created these um, shapes, this artwork, the way that I did and saved them as true type fonts is so that you can use these shapes um, as part of your true type fonts catalog and you'll be able to use them in every program, not just limited to uh, V7. You can also use it in the Cutwork software. Or really uh, any kind of software that you have so you can create something right here in v7 and you'll be able to do other things to leverage that shape um, whether it's projects or whatever you want to do in all of those other software programs but what I want to do today is I want to just play around a little bit to kind of refresh your memory and maybe give you some uh, creative ideas I do challenge you after um, downloading and installing this font, I challenge you to come into the software, play around with it. There's no rules. Remember, don't be afraid. Remember the back button, the undo button. This dude right here is your best friend. Okay? Everything can be forgiven. So get in, load some of these mand uh, mandala shapes up, create something, and save a JPEG. If you're not already a member of that uh, Facebook group, the Digitizing Divas, I highly suggest you go to Facebook and type in Digitizing Divas. Become a member of that group. I challenge you to um, save a picture of what you created in the software, upload it, and share it with everybody um, just, just so we can kind of feed off of everybody else. <clears throat> okay. So I have installed the digitizing elements and I've already done a sample right here of one of my elements. I've already colorized it and I'm still in the art canvas side of things. So let me zoom out here and I'm going to move this dude to the side here and I want to kind of show you how it's going to look for you from start to end. Because what you want to do is come over and find DE uh, Mandala 1. This is volume 1 and it has 12 original shapes in it as you can see here and you would just uh, scroll down in your character library until you start finding uh, my mandala shapes. Then click on the one that you want and because of the complexity of these shapes you have to bring them in at about 8 inches. Okay so the character height right here needs to be about 8 inches and hit insert. Now I've, I've been playing with the coloring tool and when you hit insert on your, your computer, it's just going to, there's going to be no color in the design. It's just going to be an outline. So yours will look like, at the first time, it'll look like this. Your mandala shapes will come in looking like this. Okay? This is how we start off. So if we just zoom in a little bit, I'm going to then select that shape, that digitizing element. And you can see here it's a curve right in the object manager that dude's a curve what you want to do before you can really start playing with the shape is break that apart we want to break that dude apart so we're going to do that simply by right clicking this curve and then that options menu comes up and we can come here to break curve apart we'll break that dude apart now look here you've got a bunch of individual curves now a bunch of different um, elements that you can select individually. You see here, 
what I want to do now is I oop, undo I dragged that a little bit what I want to do now is I want to start coloring you may have an idea in mind already um, I've been playing with some kind of like pastel colors as you can see here you want to start coloring uh, the shape now you can do it the long way by clicking on a shape individually and coming over and left clicking on a color and doing that one at a time or you can do it a little bit quicker than that okay we would select our first shape and left click and that's that's turned it to pink now you can see you might want to use pink in a couple other different places so all we have to do is come over and click this eyedropper I'll click the eyedropper then I'll hover over the color that I want to select and you can see my cursor is now changed to a paint bucket that means I'm in paint mode so as I hover over another object like um, right here I'm gonna skip every other one left click left click left click left click see how I've just kinda of painted those alright see how easy that was let's continue on I'll go to my second color and maybe that dude is gonna be a blue alright was it that blue or that there we go the kind of a uh, what is that a lavender kind of a lavender go over here to the eyedropper remember eyedropper it turns to a paint bucket and then I'm gonna go through and just go ahead and colorize as you can see here I'm gonna colorize everything so then I'll go to back to my selection cursor and I'm gonna select a different element this element right here maybe we want to turn that guy a green like a pastel type green there so I've done that eyedropper let me select that guy one there one there one there see how they your your uh, mandala shape is starting to really take um, take shape here this is starting to look really pretty so I'll go back to the selection tool and now this element it looks like I'm gonna do a yellow with it yep that looks good back to the eyedropper this gives you a lot of practice going back and forth to the eyedropper turning it to a paint bucket okay eyedropper that's the color I want it's changed to a bucket and you can see that's the selected color right here paint bucket boom boom and I'm gonna go ahead and move move on through this oops what did I do all right boom boom see there we've gotten all that painted now we're gonna go to the <clears throat> inside elements right here and that's gonna be more of a this type of blue here alright looks good eyedropper and this is just the creative process right here it takes a little while to go ahead and get this completely colorized and you do not have to do the shapes that I am doing that I've selected then we'll go to the eyedropper select that dude colorize colorize color I I colorize the uh, the outline actually there all right and then maybe the dot in the very middle is now a hot pink maybe now I'm gonna select this guy I'm just gonna delete him out right there that was just for an example now you can see the outline you can still see the outline in this shape and there's I believe 33 elements in here let's go ahead and hold down control a which will select all alright if you control a it that'll select everything and then I'm gonna right click right here on the box and that gets rid of the outline okay I do not like converting outlines to embroidery I like nice and clean just like that so let me hit control a again and that's selected everything once everything's um, colorized and you get rid of that outline now we just convert that dude to embroidery so I'm gonna convert that dude to embroidery and there we go now to aid you in the design process uh, the fabric that you're going to put this design whatever it ends up being the fabric that you're going to put this design on is probably not going to be this dull gray so you may want to go into design background and go ahead and change that background color to what you think you might be putting it on is it going to be pink and this will give you a real good um, this can you know in your head you can cycle through several different colors to figure out what 
uh, color of fabric might look best. Okay, so that's a pink. Maybe I, this time I want to try, let's maybe a white. Okay, the white looks okay. But let me do something a little more colorful. Maybe I'll do the um, a light blue like this here. Does that look okay? That looks okay. All right, now what we have here is by default, <clears throat> especially because this design is so big, it's going to naturally, most of it, most always convert as just a plain old fill stitch. That's what we got here. What I might want to do at this point, <clears throat> not knowing what I'm going to do with all of these individual elements, I might be thinking to myself, well, Clint, I know for sure I want to put some fancy outline, okay, that follows the outside contours of the shape as an entirety. Well, you can certainly do that, okay? Just hit Control A on your keyboard, and you'll see in the color film it has selected everything. All of the oops, all of the elements here are selected. If you select everything, what I've found most of the time, when you do that, when you first bring this shape in, you select everything. You can go to the edit, and we can go down to the outline design feature, and I can throw. Now, what I want you to do is throw an outline color that has not been used, maybe just a straight up white offset of 0.02. This is easy to mess up. If you do an offset of 2 or 0.2, things are going to get messy. It's 0.02, a very small offset, an outline count of 1. I do not want to outline holes in this situation because I don't want a big mess right in here in the middle because these would all be looked at as holes. I just want to try to do something right on the outside here. Now let's make it a satin stitch and let's see what we come up with. We'll hit OK. Now you may get a warning like this and that's OK. It may come up a few times and just hit the OK. And hopefully, look at there, it's all jacked up. I like to show you these things. Let's look in here. See, none of that looks right. I want to show you how this can be done wrong as well. It's always good to show. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out and hit undo and what the problem was it was the offset so we're naturally going to change the offset let's hit control a again go back this is just trial and error this is the part of the digitizing process outline design again I'm not going to outline holes maybe we do um, let me try 0.05 and there we go see uh, I changed the out. I changed the offset. <clears throat> I, I hit the undo button. I changed the offset, and look what we've come up with here: a nice, clean satin stitch outline around the entire object, and a little bit of filler space right here. This actually pulled off nicely and looks uh, really nice. That'll probably end up looking really nice. I know for sure I'd probably go ahead and change this little dot in the middle to a satin. Okay. And then you might want to change the direction, or you could do a star fill with it. Look at there. That star fill looks kind of cool. All right. Let me zoom out. Okay. So that's how we've started off. Just throwing a nice outline on it. And later, as you go through and start changing some of these elements, you might decide, hey, I don't want that outline. That's no problem. Later, it's easy to just select on that outline and hit delete. And then the, the outline's simply gone. Okay. It's completely gone. But look, I just deleted it, but that's no big deal because I just hit the outline and she pops right back up. Now let me show you a few other things. I don't want to get from here, I don't want to get too detailed. But what I found is this particular type of shape, and I'm going to come up with some tutorials using these mandala shapes as well. These kind of look good by mixing the different patterns of like uh, a lace stitch and a cross fill stitch and a pattern stitch some of these tools down here at the bottom let me show you what i mean so if you go in the color film uh, more than likely if i'm going to change one pink i'm going to do the same thing with all of the pink ele elements all of those objects i'm going to do the same thing with them so i found it's best to go into the color film to select all of them at once and then you can just simply go right down here turn them all to lace all right let me zoom in here, see what I've created, the pattern that I've created. But you can also right click on that element. And as you know, Lace has a couple of different options. 
you can put those on true view okay so I could change I could change it to a different style of lace okay you're not you're not you got five okay another type of lace whatever seems to float your boat whatever makes you happy I kinda like the way that that one looks right there and I'm gonna zoom back out and these can all be changed later later that's no big deal you can always go back let's go to the purple elements all right what am I gonna do with those let me hit candle wicking do you like the way that looks Eh, you know I like the way that looks Clint but it may be this may end up being too dense for what I'm doing okay well let's take that one and turn it to a pattern all right and as you know let's zoom in here as you know this is the default pattern I can right click on that to bring up the object properties and then I'm gonna go in and with patterns oh my goodness with patterns you have a zillion different combinations directions you can change the size so you really you're not limited by your creativity with the patterns are just ridiculous how many it, ridiculous in a good way how many great patterns there are now I found one pattern that I've been liking lately that I've been playing with is under the Bernina v5 this one right here this NP 005-15 uh, let me hit that one and hit apply see how it looks I really like that pattern looky here that turns out to be a really nice pattern all right now you do not have to fill every single one of these elements um, with a with a lace pattern <clears throat> there are no rules remember there are no rules so what I could do on my next element and I might change my mind I could go to this element and I could just change those all to outlines you're looking at that going Clint I really don't like that the way that looks how about a that's not a candle wicking outline and see how that's kind of buried under some of these other elements obviously we would go to the color film then and move that to the end and they pop up right on the top all right just by changing the order in which they're sewn okay you might not be in love with this but you gotta take a look you gotta click all of these different options because you never know when something's gonna boom feel like magic you know it's gonna give you the oh that looks great feeling I love that feeling by the way all right what about this dude no we're probably going to do what about nah nah uh, uh. And you could do a candle wicking with something like that maybe another pattern let's do that other pattern let's go ahead and throw that pattern in here the one that I like oops see how that one looks yeah see that looks pretty good as well all right now you're, you're kind of making something that, that looks pretty neat <clears throat> and if you want to make you want to make these stitches really pop if your background fabric is matching too much the stitch look how dramatically different I can make this all look by changing my background to black because then things will really contrast they'd be very contrasting boom really pop out you uh, pop in your face okay not to say that uh, you would end up putting anything on a black fabric but then you can really see the detail of the stitch all right let's do a few more things here let me go to I'm not gonna get too carried away let's go to this one and what maybe we do with this guy a wave fill you could turn that to a wave fill you could turn it to a star fill do something like that right there okay I don't know you could turn that off um, no we already determined that does not look good what about this guy right here this ripple fill. okay it's not too dense it's like a fill stitch it's not too dense but it really gives you some motion and some texture that's a neat little tool right there the ripple okay what about sculptured uh, too dense nice but too dense so we'll go back we'll go back here to the uh, ripple fill and you can change those settings as well and see how you're really starting to come up with something that looks nice alright what I want you to do don't get too complicated about it download and install this mandala true type font these digitizing elements go into the art canvas load that dude colorize it then convert it to embroidery get to playing around here like I've just shown you create something nice 
Something different. It does not have to be perfect. Create something nice, save it as a picture, and post it in that in that uh, Digitizing Divas uh, Facebook group. That would be great. And we can comment on it, like it, and share it. Um, I will have... I will be developing actual project tutorials using these shapes. So let's get comfortable with playing with them. You can use them in many different ways. For today, this is it. This is Clint Seeley, and thank you for watching.